Hello, everybody, and welcome to the News Based Podcast. And I'm here with uh, someone who I am very happy to speak to, Jay Fratt of theconservativehippie.com. Um, uh, he's recently been the, I think, his campaign manager, you would say, for Eric John Campaign Burner's, director. Yeah, yeah, for, for Eric John Berners' presidential campaign um and we talked he actually came on the first news paced podcast to tell me about that adventure that he was going on and that adventure ended recently on the 23rd of august they released a statement saying uh eric john burner saying that he was gonna uh, put his back in behind uh trump and that he had uh he, he had given up because it was obviously uh issues um and one of the issues i think was a certain person who entered onto the scene who we talked about in the first episode we talked about vivek ramesh uh, shami uh, swami ramaswami um and how he was if he got a lot of air that would take a lot of air away from uh eric of course and that obviously happened but i'm really happy to be be here we're going to talk about some of that we're going to we're going to have a proper conversation and we we are very much i mean for the people who who uh no jay you know, we're very much in many ways on the opposite side of the fence and we're very much in many ways on exactly the same side of the fence and then it makes you question what a fence is <laughs> and where 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 we should put our fences and where where we actually stand and so i i'm really looking forward to this conversation to be perfectly honest to other people we've been having a conversation probably for about an hour before we've even had this conversation because this is the problem we're two people who uh, you like talking about stuff sit down and start talking it's going to get interesting and i think this will get interesting so jay thank you for being with me how are you i'm great i'm great i apologize to uh the folks that are used to list uh, watching your uh, news pace podcast which are great uh, that I've got terrible video. I've got this weird uh, lens flare going on. It's I'm a, a podcaster. I like audio, so I'm trying the best I can in the studio to bring some, bring a camera in. Uh, Johnny forced me on camera, so uh, here I am. And we've uh, we've had a tough time getting together just because of the time difference. And mm. you know, it, it's either morning for me or evening for you. Evening for you, morning for me. And um, I, I think sometime we need to have a proper conversation where we both have a, uh, a glass of whiskey or a uh, bit of Jägermeister uh, or a spliff and uh, we have a conversation that way. Yeah, yeah, that would probably be a good idea. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, I'm thinking about different styles and and the way i do my things all the time and i would definitely like something that's a little bit more chilled um i've actually got a really a nice bottle of something in the background oh, someone brought me where, where is it can i actually oh there you go oh if you want oh if we can get together sometime and we could drink a bit of blue label oh. someone yeah someone bought me some uh Lovely Johnny Walker Blue Label. Ooh, she's, uh, now, she's, now, one of the it, things about you, and I apologize to the people listening, if you want to get some stuff out of me, great, maybe it'll come. But I, I'm used to interviewing people, so, so inevitably this is going to turn into me interviewing you as well. Where in the world are you right now? Oh, man, isn't it a terrible place? I'm... I've had a I've had a really hard um few months, a hard few years, a hard few decades, a hard life. <laughs> that's the way that's where I am. I kind of, you know, I I'm I'm I I'm very much I, I've always gone with the wind. You know, I'm always I'm always happy to flit around and uh find my place as where it must be at that time and i i really have been since 2015 on a karmic wave um but i that wave goes up and down and so i've had like loads of super difficult experiences over the past um few years and few months especially uh and so i think i'm on the precipice of great change i'm about to i think have to you know, eventually uh, lay out my world to everybody and everybody's going to go, holy hell in a handbag. But for the time being, 
uh i i've got to be i got to be like the wind i got to be like i just got got to go with it i got to i got to be a feather floating on the wind and and being taken in the di- right direction so at the moment i would say i'm a little bit biblical that's what i'd say okay all right uh, full, could you say full of faith yeah 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 for okay. ma- massively full of faith um i mean my son was um really ill recently and it's been like a real yeah. test in time and and some days i walked the streets and i was just like at the bottom at the bottom that you could ever possibly get you know like where your heart is just completely broken well and... i can't imagine how difficult it would be to have a young child hospitalized with a um at times a mysterious illness um at times a diagnosed illness like you've been on this roller coaster but that roller coaster for you is a hemisphere away without yeah, yeah, yeah. control without influence and then to have the dramatics going on in the background that became public that you know all during this time where your son who you love is a hemisphere away uh battling with with mortality in life and 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 needing needing medical help um thankfully if i'm not mistaken um he's now going through at these at the end of this where he's expected to see a healthy life into the future as of today yeah yeah um this evening uh chilean time he should be uh getting out of hospital really for the first time in i think it's about three months now uh, it's yeah. uh, terrifying uh to think about everything that's gone on and i yeah uh, right now for me even though i'd love to um tell everybody the story of my life i'm going to wait a little bit of time um i'm going to have to but i tell you uh there's going to be a lot of broken hearts that come in the future because that's i mean the truth about people's lives if you i i i'm not someone who wants to be like showing people off my personal life i don't i just don't want my private my private life my 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 hidden world you know uh, a lot of my life has been very simple i'm a very simple person i like meeting people walking around talking with people i like being around people i like being around people i found that hard i mean one of the 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 reasons why i'd say i found chilly hard at times was that not being able to talk to people being very distant from other people um not having groups I like like you know I, I i i'm someone who likes to wake up walk around uh in the morning with a dog and people are saying hello as you walk by and most of the people i know are neighbors are friends are members of the community and i really mean it um if you were to come over to my house and we were to walk outside, it would be every second person who stops and has a conversation. Uh, people in my community will cook food for each other, will look after each other, will care for each other in ways that, that I, I find like really special. So, uh, I mean, where I am now, where I am now is looking back, thinking about the past, thinking about what's been, thinking about what's happened trying not to be bitter trying not to be angry there's been lots of real complicated things that have happened over the past uh few years but being under uh, you know finally understanding that eventually i'm about i'm i'm on the edge of telling a story um which will probably blow people's brains <laughs> wide open they just I, my life has been bizarre. It's been a, a, a true roller coaster, um, and I, I, where I am now is stepping just over the lines, just yeah. over the lines. Just well, if you need, if you need uh, help releasing that, um, in terms of extracting it out of you, um, I would be uh, willing to interview you to to extract that story um, you're but... a beautiful man but jay but jay jay this is still this is a newspaper podcast here and you've done the same thing you've done the same thing i think you're stepping over a line too because you stepped out of your comfort zone and you became a campaign director for uh, a presidential candidate and you've been on a journey so where are you well, right it, now it, it is a complicated story and where i was resonating with what you were saying is 
trying to look back at recent experiences and withhold the bitterness, withhold the anger, put those things aside. Um, because in reality, that's ego, that's, that doesn't matter. And I, and I see myself very much as a volunteer. Um, a couple years ago, I just kind of put my life on autopilot or uh, yesterday I used the analogy, uh, I put it in neutral. So I put my life in neutral and I went out uh, volunteering and uh, eventually this led to Eric John Berner contacting me as we spoke about on the first Newspace podcast. And you mentioned Vivek Ramaswamy and to go through this process in real time where we're in Iowa and we're campaigning, we're finding success, we're really resonating with people and um, Donald Trump and um, Ron DeSantis were in Iowa the same within the same week period um, actually within the same town. So I think it was DeSantis that came through, then Trump had a rally in uh, Davenport uh, or across the river in Moline. I can't remember which one it was. And then Eric Berner, we, we had a, a planned event in Davenport, Iowa as well. And it was actually one of his best speeches of the campaign. And at that time, you really felt like there was going to be some momentum that was going to propel us forward. Um, then thrust upon the scene, the juxtaposition of Eric Berner is Vivek Ramaswamy. I mean, you mention him and it's very interesting. I was, I was looking at DeSantis and I was worried about the way DeSantis was going to take all the oxygen out of the room. But we saw this guy, this Vivek Ramaswamy, and we were looking at him who's just throwing red meat, throwing red meat left and right to the masses to chew on um, that would be uh, primary voters that kind of speak to all of the um, ideologies at the same time, while him, him himself and his story very much were not associated with that. In juxtaposition, you've got Eric Berner, who's been a, a servant of country, a, a patriot, um, and, and very wildly successful, uh, innovative tech um, mind uh, on the campaign trail. And there were differences between the two. So the big difference was Eric Berner had experience that made him qualified to run the executive office. Vivek Ramaswamy did not. Vivek Ramaswamy had money loads of money. Eric Berner did not. And as we went on this campaign trail, we kept seeing these pay gates, these paywalls, these constructs that had money associated with them, including the media. You know, don't, don't think that you can't get a hold of a salesman and then the salesman gets a hold of somebody else. And if you promise to buy a certain amount of ads, maybe that opens up the uh, journalism uh, to cover you, right? Mm -hmm. So we had success in terms of the local, our local uh, paths, and we were able to get some local media. Um, and even a couple times that local media got syndicated across the state. So we would see uh, something that we did in Iowa, uh, let's say on the eastern side of Iowa, we would see somebody say that it was reported uh, over on the western side of Iowa that, bl that bled into Nebraska. So very much, you know, when we were going through this process, uh, it was very hopeful and very positive. Um, and then it just ground down. Eventually, uh, we went through South Carolina. Um, at one point, we were able to uh, cajole our way. Uh, work our way uh, to the microphone for a convention um, in South Carolina and speak to uh, around 600 people um, at a Republican convention. So that was another uh, little success. So mm -hmm. entrepreneurial and grassroots and just gumption were really getting us through to where we felt like there was a, a, a enough of a momentum to break through to the next level and the next level. Um, but it didn't happen. Uh, New Hampshire uh, came. We really struggled within New Hampshire. Um, we had some events. It was going okay. Again, we were making very good connections with people, um, but the money wasn't there. We were paying for gas. We were paying for lodging, but we weren't paying for the next trip. 
So you have to not only pay for that trip, you have to pay for the next trip. And we weren't banking um, campaign donations to pay for that next trip. And so eventually, as I'm building out uh, a trip to Nevada, um, and it became clear at that time that we weren't going to, he wasn't going to make the debate stage. Um, and I've got, I don't know how, what I want to say about that process, but um, the debate stage was out of reach. We, we decided, hey, let's, let's maintain hope, let's maintain positivity, because in our world, it could just take one day, one day within the zeitgeist of Twitter or somewhere else, those donations could come in, you could make that stage. What really uh, personally, in campaign internal, what really affected the campaign and the mentality of the campaign was Eric was always looking forward to the soapbox at the Iowa State Fair. And for those that know or don't know, it's this big setup. It's this big uh, stage at the State Fair and all the candidates come and the media is there looking at the candidates. And um, Eric always expected to participate. And uh, I discovered through the process of trying to get him on that stage that it was the uh, Des Moines County Register that decided through their own um, filter of uh, vetting who made the stage and who didn't. Wow. And, they, and they determined, the Des Moines County Register determined that Eric what did is, not pull... what, what is the County Register? Is that an official office or is that a newspaper? Uh, it's a newspaper. Newspaper. Yeah, out of, I thought uh, I thought that's what you meant, and uh, it's yes. just like so. So so, the 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 there's one newspaper who decides uh, who's gonna. That's yes. quite astounding. That's quite yes. astounding. But that's what you find on these things. Isn't it? The and so I officially contacted oh. them, found the contact, and reached out. You know because. People like to say, oh, never heard of him or this or that. You could always look through the list of candidates running for president and you could always see Eric John Burner stand out. And you can also list on two hands. OK, so 20, 20 folks, people that were actively campaigning. Now you can get to less hands, less fingers, excuse me, on these hands when you talk about candidates who had toured the early primary states, Iowa, South Carolina, New Hampshire. So Eric Berner was a member of a very select group. This wasn't, oh, there's a thousand people running for president. Who's supposed, how's anybody supposed to know him? No, no, no. He was a member of a very select group. So, and it would be easy to vet him and the fact that he's got a very good website, ericburner.com. If you want to look it up, it's E-R-I-C-B-O-E-R-N-E-R.com. If you want to look it, it up. It's very flashy see, indeed. Yes, you can see uh, the, the um, news and updates section is where we released a lot of uh, detailed policies that we were proposing because the whole point of the campaign was to do it with high integrity, with ideas, uh, to inject a real patriot, a real person who was volunteering for service into this conversation. And so, yes, the Des Moines County Register, a newspaper out of Des Moines, Iowa, decides who was on this soapbox, who got into the soapbox. And they decided that Eric Berner was not going to be included. And that crushed him. That was a, that was a, bit, of a bit of a kick right to the solar plexus. And um, we, it just became evident um, that this hope and positivity that one day, this one day, it kept ratcheting up to the next day of, you know, maybe all these lures that I had out and all these lakes and rivers of social zeitgeist influencers, one day, one of those was going to bite. Um, and yes, of all the people I contact, contact about the campaign, Johnny Vedmore, uh, this foreigner, is the only one that ever showed uh, media interest um, in the campaign. Um, and, you know, that's the most disappointing of it is... I am pretty disappointed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is with all these lures that I had out and all these contacts that I'd made and these personal letters and... Uh, to media types, both mainstream, both alt, um, both I would even say outside of alt, you know, just what I what I deemed as people who are popular within the social zeitgeist, people I had relationships with, 
um, in terms of kind of knew them in some way and had an in in terms of personal, you know, like the when I contacted you long time ago, you don't just contact somebody and say, hey, what's up? You show that you know a little bit about them or, mm -hmm. you know, you share fellowship. So, you know, I, it through using those techniques, and, uh, nobody bit. And it was, uh, I would say on the campaign trail, I wasn't a public speaker, but I'm thrust into this role where I've got to speak to a room of people. And I would talk to them about creativity and courage. It, it takes creativity to see it, to see the potential success of this campaign. And it takes courage to support it. And um, yeah, it's unfortunate. I, we didn't find enough people who were... Uh, either creative enough to see it or uh, courageous enough to support it. I think, I think it also sounds like um, a victim of something that we see industrial nowadays, which is this like filtration system, the filter system that we get that, that is of course online heavily now is a, we, we go through shadow bands and censorship, but that's also exists in as something simple as um, Des Moines, uh, newspaper that they'll still be the filter there's these like very narrow filters and you're only getting through if you're on the list already so we, official uh, yeah these yeah. official official filters i i call it as i was on the campaign trail i developed the the term the money machine i call it the money machine because there are great people who don't have nefarious intentions they're they're just really good people but they're still mesmerized and captured within the money machine that was created in politics you the term you just used very well was filter so i i said again about vivek ramaswamy that i'm i'm not picking on him but it's a great illustration of oh, i want to pick on him how would you I, have I, yeah come on i mean you're not on the campaign trail anymore you could pick on him just a little bit because he's so pickable i it mean was, it, it was easy it was easy to see and when i saw mega mega country if you will promoting him and propping him up it was like have you guys not even read his wikipedia page wow. i mean his wow. his wikipedia page is has loads of things you can dig on, let's just say. And yeah. and people did, so they stayed very superfluous and, and just looked into, uh, oh, Paul Pelosi. And the early technique they did with that is, is they did this trick where they said, oh, people are trying to connect me with George Soros. Or excuse me, I said, I said Paul uh, Pelosi, I meant Paul Soros. And, oh, people are trying to connect me with George Soros. I've got nothing to do with George Soros. And it was like, no, it's Paul Soros. And it was... Uh, I was, I tried to use that at the time. I didn't even know there was a Paul Soros and so much in this world as Johnny has dug into it, you find these brothers, you find mm -hmm. these, these two, these coins of different sides that are doing, that are working as one and doing pretty much the same thing. That's how we have this uniparty globalist yeah. uh, agenda and or system and or money machine. So anyways, to watch him go through and have the media contacts from his former appearances on Fox News or Fox uh, Business News, wherever it was, and then have the money to, to pay the, the, the paywalls within this money machine. To his credit, again, to be fair, dudes fire on the microphone. I mean, dudes fire on a microphone. So there is a performative... Um, there is a performative requirement also to running for president or being able to speak to loads of people and give this man credit as his performative abilities on the microphone are very good. He's a high intellectual person uh, that speaks very well to his book. Yeah, it's hard for me to... Um uh not be very rude about him because to be honest he uh he's one of those people who grinds my gears he gets on my nerve i don't like his voice i don't like how he sounds i don't like i don't believe him when he talks and i i just find him on some levels like a creepy side character villain that's going to pop up again later on down the line and yes. we're all going to go ugh, oh and eventually everybody will just go ugh, ugh, ugh. but he'll still by that point he would have made up because He's fire on the microphone to a certain amount of people who want to hear that message. But once after the message is gone and you got to see the facts and you got to see what someone's like, he looks like he's a uh, um, sell you out to the globalists in two seconds. He looks like he's yes. actually like the devil in disguise. So I, I, 
I, well, not I even in disguise. He, he would say yeah. it along the way. He's a venture capitalist. And he was yeah. trying to set up structures yeah. to be the anti <laughs> anti ESG venture capitalist, right? I mean, oh, he said it man, along the that, way. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that exists really. I, I, I think hey, if you're a venture capitalist, you'll sell out to any any ideology soon enough. You know. Yeah. Oh my God. Or look to being or look to be a vent to make money. or look Sorry. to be a vent and influence operation for uh, the money. Uh, in some way. Um, so when I was looking for the through the Wikipedia, you know, you can find things like the Kaufman Foundation, and they bought this very company very early on that seeded his um, wealth very early on. And um, other people now, I believe it was Code Monkey Z, Ron uh, uh, Wat Watkins, I think is his name, um, discovered you know, started highlighting his first business and or how he was into biotech and how he just bought these off patent drugs and and played that game, which is a game, which is a game, and um, it achieved more wealth that way. And so it's 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 part of what disappoints me about what I saw in our society is um, we we are very much. I've I've always been against celebrity. Um, and the celebrity influence, you know, how we have these actors that um, achieve some sort of amount of influence. And you can look and say, you know, when they're giving you uh, ideas on global warming and climate change or the economy, and you have to just look at your fellow neighbors and slap them, you realize they are a play actor. Like yeah. this person you're idolizing is literally a play actor mm -hmm. and they hold no... Um, um, they are not above you. They are not this thing. They're they're not something aspirational. They they have achieved what they've achieved because they are very good play actors. And we are all. I like try to look at things as we're all peers in this world. Every person is a peer to me, and I am a peer to every person. Whether they are homeless and on the streets, or Donald Trump or Elon Musk, they are a peer. And I think that we need to look at that a little bit more and. Uh, take, put those glasses on when we look at these constructs of influence. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, wait, he is really, I mean, he's got, he's got a lot of construct about him. And if you, it is like a brief look at his Wikipedia page and some of it, I did, I, I forgot that I had noted that in my head before, um, back when we had done the first, the first uh, interview that uh, he had served on the Ohio COVID-19 response team. Um oh. Uh, and and uh, some of the other things, of course, um, he, he like involvement with Peter Thiel, uh, etc. He seems to be someone who who can uh, tell uh, the the big boys like Vanguard and BlackRock what they should be doing because he knows best. Um, but I think he's just a um, a big mouth by the sounds of it. Um, with most of well, what the, he does, you know. And this is this is where you and I. You and I have a conflict in some ways, and it's nice that we can um, have these conflicts and talk to each other because mm -hmm. people don't know behind the scenes, I would reach out to you and say, hey, try to look for positivity in these different mm -hmm. rabbit holes you go down. And another thing I've learned just through what I call reality investigation or um, journalism or whatever I'm trying to do when I'm trying to get at the heart of these problems within our society and how to fight against it because we clearly have we're being led down this road um, and we're on a road right now of destruction. I mean, it's so easy to see it's like when we, you give away, it's an easy, uh, an easy uh, um, example is all the billions and billions and billions of dollars that we find to send to Ukraine. Um, and you send uh, $700 off to each person in Hawaii. It's like, hello, you know, th this is, this is our structure. Our representatives are doing this, but I've found that part of this problem is always seeing from a lens of good and bad, black and white. And I try very hard to not see somebody as good or bad or black or white. And this name Peter Thiel comes up. Um, and I know, I understand that he's got connections to things that you um, have investigated um, and your former uh, partner has investigated and, and you think of him as bad. You think of Elon Musk as bad. You know, you've got all this evidence as bad. I've come across evidence that uh, Peter Thiel has done good things. And 
um, has done things that would be considered um, benevolent and or uh, truly at the heart and spirit of helping America. So I try to go into this lens, right, where nothing is white, nothing is black, it's all gray. And you got benevolence one- stuck in my head now, though. You've got benevolence <laughs> stuck in my head. That's that's all I get. Because 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 that that is an interesting term to use because I feel that 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 is what the um, tech hierarchy, such as Peter Thiel and or technocratic hi- potentially transhumanist hierarchy like Peter Thiel and Elon Musk, they sit with this idea of. Uh, benevolence like they've already know the future so that makes them almost um uh more than ethereal uh closer to godlike you know um and then and then there's elements of the feeling of well you know you get told all the stories you get told all the the morals and the power uh, there's lots of things in life where you're like are these guys going to look like are they going to be good guys or are they going to end up being fallen angels because at the same time they're living through their peak right now when people live through their peak they are very easy to like compared to when they're not living through their peak when elon musk is old and scabby and scouring and the richest man in the world who's working with military defense contractors and is and peter Thiel's helping him create like an all-out surveillance state i'm not sure we'll look at him and go oh handsome young chaps we're gonna see we're gonna see them as old men working for the system that has been created around us and that we don't have any control over and they seem like the one of the tools or one of the create like high level creators of the tools to take that freedom away from us So so that's but that benevolence, I feel, is like one of my issues with them. Right, and I, I get it. I get it. Let me let me see if I can spit this out because this is where the conflict lies between us. And uh, when I've done podcasts with people that I would call, I don't know, anarchists in some way. I mean, you have an anarchist philosophy at, uh, in in intellectual anarchism right not not going and spray painting an a on the concrete and shouting but uh the true got a guitar i got a guitar with an anarchy symbol on it i mean you just can't hide okay. it. okay well on the so one maybe, side anarchy on the top yeah. so so what i don't like about our current system of influence is this meme lording and clearly elon musk donald trump they have tapped into something um, that is getting through to a mass amount of people um, just through this mimetic um, idea, this meme lording, um, as, I, as I call it. And, and in some ways, it lacks integrity. In some ways, it's a modern way of influencing and reaching people. But you say they know the future and they become godlike. That's the ego. And that's where we have to inject ourselves and hold them accountable. And within uh, why I volunteer for the Republican Party and why I consider myself a libertarian-leaning Republican, right? Libertarianism is the foundation of the Republican Party, is this transparency and accountability. Where I see positivity within the narrative, where somebody like you that's just trudging around in the mud, constantly seeing just the mud of there's a lot the of mud. Neg- you are right yeah the negative angles right you are a brave character and god bless you for trudging around in this mud seeing all of these things that you can very se- clearly see these negative angles this this panopticon of global control mm-hmm. this destruction of the united states turn us into a third world country um completely controlled through cbdc's and this and this uh, structure of um ai surveillance and used as a tool i, I i'm there with you People, people who watch your show and you get consumed by that could easily dismiss me and say, well, Jay's just a useful idiot. Well, the way I look at it is, is I don't think that that technology can be stopped. I, but we have to rise up in positions of influence. We have 
We have structures in place that we can participate in, right? So I believe the Democrat Party is completely uh, corrupted and, and taken away. The Republican Party is a bit open for local participation, right? I even tell people that are leftists and principled leftists who I enjoy. I love having arguments because you, you or I, you say we're on different sides of the fence. The whole thing is, is if you have a foundation of patriotism and doing right and, uh, um, you know, good for your local community, you can argue about the use of government, right? So that's basically where the argument is, is how to apply government. As long as we all um, have some sort of uh, general understanding of patriotism and doing good and helping humans. I, I, I get that they've hijacked those, those things. Uh, but it, I feel people in the audience watching or listening right now are injecting so much and I'm responding to them. Just, I, I get, I get the, the, um, the pushback there. My point is, is if you can't stop what's coming as far as technology, and you can look at it in the ways that it can help us positively. And you can try to solidify those rights that have already been solidified, right? I mean, we, in the United States, I look at it very much from the lens of the United States. And the United States could possibly be the last country on the planet that is uh, the, the, the shoe to drop. Now, I know there's other countries that are doing very well in their fight against this. Um, and it's helping us give us um, impetus in moving forward. But with our Constitution and our rights that are from God, if we can solidify those rights that are under assault right now from this web that's trying to be put over us, there are, there are good ways that technology can help humanity and help and help instill these God-given rights for freedom and almost transcend the exploration um, that we're trying to do. In other words, you say transhumanist like it's a bad thing. I've got, I know an anarchist friend of mine who's a genius hacker, an anonymous type, that can't wait to get his consciousness beamed up into um, this transhumanist. Barbara state. Marks Hubbard's arsehole. <laughs> Sorry, what, I can now... <laughs> what's that? <laughs> up into... He could beam... Uh, be directly beamed up into Barbara Marks Hubbard's arsehole. Zoop, yeah. That's how you get up there. Zoop, she's up there. Oh, you're up there in the in the in the Marks Hubbard sphere, and you're 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 all right now. You feel just nothing but happiness. Well, because I think he views that uh, he's a lot of us do uh, these. Uh, we are outliers, right, within our communities, within our. Um, within humanity and he is very much an outlier and he feels like he doesn't have a place here and uh he's very much a hacker type so he's very much connected to the computer mm -hmm. and even though he's an anarchist and he's also uh, very adept at uh um, working within his community and he does uh, charitable efforts and helps people in his community he wants to get beamed up he's looking forward to that so what i'm trying to say is is that you can see the technology as an assistant to humanity and not a control uh, tool of humanity. In other words, you can see us. You can see a scenario where um, instead of this control grid, it becomes an assistant and uplifting of um, humanity moving forward. And I don't believe that we can stop that which is coming. That that technological influence, um, you know, and that, so I'm trying to inject myself. Uh, one of Eric's um, policies that he put forth was an AI treaty, um, an artificial intelligence AI treaty, um, a global treaty as part of his uh, presidential platform. And who better in this time, to why I got involved and, and became such a volunteer of faith, is who better at this time, Eric wrote the original or he was a partner in creating the original Google search algorithm before Larry and Serge even started Google. So why not this guy who maintained integrity um, was always seeking to volunteer and serve society, serve his country. Why not this guy who resisted that ego and that meme Lord and that um, military industrial complex, uh, uh, Bait um, on the end of that hook. That guy, I thought, 
absolutely deserved um, our consideration, and I wanted to see him thrust into the conversation for president. And um, I still, so, so to get to finishing the answer is yes, the campaign has suspended. He created an official endorsement letter uh, for Donald Trump. Again, I, I view Donald Trump as the only vehicle that exists within all of the candidates for president to where positivity and true American patriotism and true um, volunteerism at heart can be injected into the system. So that's the endorsement that was made. I'm very much behind it. And um, the next phase is trying to get that endorsement to Donald Trump, um, trying to get that to see what comes of it, because that was Donald Trump's problem. If you're going to view from the lens, the lens of Donald Trump uh, was this outlier who busted in the door and uh, became president and Part of his failings were the uh, backstabbers and self-interested creeps around him. Um, what he needs in the next administration would be true volunteers and highly capable people for his administration. And Eric John Berner uh, would be a cabinet type person. And so to get that information to Donald Trump is the next phase. And that's what phase we're in right now. Uh, if you look at it from a very matrix lens this mm -hmm. the through official structures and official steps that were taken oh, this is that's uh oh yeah 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 he said a lot there he said a lot there there's a lot sorry i was no, trying that's, I, all, that's all right that's all right it's just that you know i smoke a lot of weed and i drink a <laughs> lot of tea and fizzy drinks and you well, know i'm prone to and philosophy I've, and etc but still I, I I got I got there's a few there's a few places. I mean when we're talking about um stance and lean, I gotta really make my own stance. I, I I one I, I really admire the leave me aloneism, uh alonerism, you know, uh type. I like the the uh, anarchy sort of I'm going to create my own thing over here you bugger off and do your own things over there leave me alone and don't get involved in my life and I won't get involved in your life that that sort of like brand of of anarchist libertarian thinking has always yeah. appealed to me you know I've 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 liked it but then you know I'm also brought up in the city uh and i brought up in a nice city not not a horrible city you know i'm brought up in a city where yeah it's still full of you know, nasty people and nice people all mixed around like any any city but it's a really nice you know it's really nice feeling cardiff is a very special place it's it's uh it's a, one of the homes of song there's always people singing out on the streets and even though it could get a bit rowdy at times there's always so much love to be found and everything's so chilled and peaceful it's it's you know it's f 350 000 people living in uh, what is a, a real uh, nice size city a lot of space you know everything's spaced out so so i like that i like that but i i've liked the idea of doing the other thing but yet when you get down to doing the other thing you're like oh yeah but the flies and the smell you know <laughs> do you really want that if you're from the city for all of your life and you're like oh yeah okay i want part of that and part of this but you know i can't really work it out and i know i know i i'm i've been studying very carefully i wanted to write some Something at one point which was like a, a vision of where the intelligence services would want to take us um with technology and understanding like things like uh herman kahn sort of predictions uh, for what technological to expect technologically in the future um if you can merge that together you can kind of get an idea of what would become more powerful what what technologies would cancel out another technology or become a new thing or you know and i i tried to work out and all i could think was this dark image of of terrible surveillance where you don't have any basically any human contact and all of this and i I not I I know there's just loads of people who just would never let that happen, especially I you know I playful people I'm I'm from a place where, in Wales where you you 
people are really playful and if you push them too far they get really angry <laughs> and playful so they're not they're not scared to do some naughty things i mean historically speaking if you go back to the um time where we were having issues i think it was the late 1800s we were having issues with um the english putting up toll roads uh in wales and we didn't like any of it so uh, a load of men big burly men would dress up as women um and they would call themselves i think it was the children of rebecca it got known as rebecca riots and and they basically uh would go there and they would preach the bible as they destroyed the tolls uh, and the toll gates and, and and bust everything up and there's a lot of that in wales you know we're really playful people so it's hard for me to look at at the future and and not see see something uh, terrible but then not see how that would then be uh, undermined by people being just mischievous and naughty because that's what human beings are We're back in the day when um in britain i mean if you look at things culturally uh, at one point in britain they introduced those uh, locks like in america the t the wheel clamps they introduced those standard uh and and suddenly everything got clamped all the time and it was a bugger and everybody was paying out loads of money and complaining loads and writing long letters how, about how angry they were in france the same thing happened at the same time but the french people went around and started sticking super glue in all of the locks of the the uh, clamps and um, they soon discovered that the clamp companies were losing way too much money for it to be a profitable business so it's just like a small little like gap apart and you have like a, a slight different cultural reaction and and you get a completely different like uh, result than you expect. And the, the, the authorities don't have control. There's a balance. They don't have control on that because every time they push down on it, people push away. And then where things rest is all dependent on how the culture feels. So this is why I feel that everything is basically being put, or all of the cards are put into psyops nowadays. So psychological operations are happening all around. We're able to see them, point at them, and we know what that does is take away the people and and the education systems being being done dumbed down for decades and decades it's got to a point where people don't know what they don't know anymore you know they're starting to lose bits of the knowledge when i go back through the newspaper archives i discover things that i don't expect at all when i talk about history with people um sometimes i discover that and i discover i i was the same before as well i just just large parts of history that i was completely unaware of i was completely unaware that nearly all of the uh, people who were involved in the creation of the cia and uh who uh manned all of its different coups and stuff were nearly all anti-zionists really like nazis like <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, you probably, yeah. I, I mean, come, you, you know who they are. They are like Kermit Roosevelt Jr., the Dallas uh, boys. You know, all of the same usual suspects. They all worked alongside, like uh, people like Alan Dulles. Alan Dulles was st in Switzerland uh, during a lot of the war. And they did. He said the house he was in. It was just had Nazis and and Western commanders coming in and out and, and different troops and all of these different things and people dropping. It's it's, it's all spy games. It's all, it doesn't matter. They didn't care about the ideology and that's what that's what my uh, one of my problems is is that i see all of these people who are like elon musk and we it's why elon musk and and uh peter Thiel, and they they are so untrustworthy because they change their coat every week i mean they they change their coat every week so last week elon musk is being portrayed by his all his pr team and his followers as a hero for standing up and not giving um uh permission for the americans to use satellites over the ukraine and then yes, today in, in crimea yeah, yeah yeah and now uh, and, the uh, but but they have they have they, they now they have of course they now have, they have. Uh, he gave and, uh, he gave yeah. he gave control beyond the geofence to the american government yeah, so yeah, now the american going. government now the american government is in charge and directly involved in the conflict but the, the public the public battle and the public arena is all a psyop it's, it's <laughs> made he's gonna do it he's always gonna do it he's always gonna happen he, he's but, he's gonna bend wait, over Johnny, because he to, bends hang over hang on i agree with what you're saying i agree with what you're saying and you're, but you're saying it's all a psyop when i when i saw that story uh, how do you know the entire story isn't just complete bullshit 
the original story that they were exactly. going to attack exactly. and Elon Musk Starlink stopped them from attacking. Yeah, no, that exactly. seems like complete no, bullshit. I mean, the whole thing. I'm saying all of it. I'm saying that none of it is I, when you go and live on the down in the southern hemisphere, yeah, you suddenly discover that no one gives a shit about what's going on in America and Europe. Like the idea that that oh, oh the Russians are gonna attack and stuff is just ridiculous. It's just so far removed from your reality when you're in somewhere like um the, the, the like uh, south south america um but the fact is is that all of these things are all like psychologically based when you study all of that the years after the world wars and how all of these people sort of work together to create this society you realize they're all part of it you don't get up to owning this amount of companies or business or organizations or running things like elon musk or peter Thiel without being part of the infrastructure without being uh allowed without having someone say no okay you've got the role for the future that does this and so all of this it feels like feels predictive and it feels like it's going towards something that looks more like a comic book i got 2000 ad up there it looks more like mega cities and even when you li when you analyze what peter Thiel and elon musk say they a lot of them have this idea that there's going to be these big mega cities in the future um and that's naturally going to happen because of how technology works and i agree it seems to be that there's going to be a decision and that will be a massive cultural shift in humanity that will take a lot of the humanity away from humanity however much people try and keep the humanity within it the people who want to keep humanity will be living outside of those and that means it's going to be yeah. you're more successful in that society if you lack empathy and you're narcissist and you have all of the weapons technology and power and the impetus mm. to control the other people from the outside and then on the other side you've got all these people who are like i want to be left alone and just you know work my plot of land and over there isn't is a, a lot of people who generationally will get rewarded for narcissistic behavior who what's the thought of how are you going to deal with those people who won't give you a nugget of something we're, you want from them we're already there though i mean you yeah, said, i know you, i know you I know, said I know. You, you said a, you said a lot there so let me, let me try to wrestle the mic away for a second and i keep looking at, at my image and i apologize about the the flare and the lighting in here um i look like the ghost in the machine so um if I've, I've said this, if the singularity happens in the future, then we're already in the singularity. And I investigate so many different things. I call myself a reality investigator. And I come across so many interesting people. And we talk about philosophy. And you can, you can apply that to simulation theory if you want to um, in many different ways. But we're already there. We need to get the narcissist out. And just like you said, there is a structure, but you're... You're implying that the way that it's been recently where people are chosen and it's decided who who gets to be the narcissist that's in control of this particular structure. If good people volunteer and inject themselves into the system, the more that that happens, whether you consider yourself a principled leftist or a, a, a principled libertarian, right? Whatever. Forget political ideology. Just, just know that you have... Um, good character at heart you've wrestled with your own ego and your own um spirals of negativity um self-fulfilling destruction if you've wrestled with those and kind of negated those which all humans have that we have to kind of wrestle with if you've gone beyond that and you truly are uh, volunteering um and giving yourself up within faith there are thousands out there doing that right now believe me and so if we can try to give them energy and we try to give the positive angle of it, the energy and the um, encouragement and the courage, that's how we can get to the mega city structure. And what I said is we can't stop what's coming in terms of this technological uh, panopticon that's already here, that people are worried about in the future and it's already here. Well, we need to get people in that will, again, solidify our rights, our God-given rights within this new structure, which is already here. That's the way to move forward. Um, 
the battle within culture and society and the guy who just with well, a curmudgeon who just wants to be left alone that you and I both enjoy. We love that guy, the battle within culture and society and that guy versus the um, fashionista brand worshiper that's in the city. You know, that's always going to exist. It's here now. It's always going to exist. Um, the Peter Thiel's of the world and, People like that, you know, maybe they just need people to come along to influence them, support them, in, inject themselves into that structure to support the more um, righteous causes that are right at their fingertips um, to guard us. I'll, I'll tell you, part of my, part of my investigation, I, I'm not at all Pollyanna or, or I just think it's important for us to maintain positivity. You know, I've been consistent with that since you and I started talking. I understand that we are all up in the cloud right now. And, and, and people may not understand that, right, that are watching, but we are, our, our consciousness, our, our blueprint of who we are from these things is up in the cloud. They know what we're going to do. They know every thought that we're going to have. They know the direction we're going. Um, some people have applied technical terms to it called the PAS, uh, and they use the PAT to ex access the PAS. I'm not, I'm not the one that's going to start lecturing people and explaining that. What I'm saying is they already have tools within the AI. So we have to get to the point where – um, these structures that are already there, they already know us, they already have these tools that can influence us through psychological operations, through whatever, it's advertising, it's back, go back to Bernays and, and, and talk about, you know, at just advertising at the very beginning, right? It's always been there. So we have to inject positivity, we have to inject um, what, what is ethics, once again, uh, there's a word I'm just I'm missing that people are probably screaming right now um, that really good people, and I don't mean to say what I can say, and I can look anybody in the eye right now, I can walk into any room on this planet and feel very comfortable because I've never been a better person than I am right now. And that's a very powerful thing because I have faith in my heart and what I believe in, and I just want to help people. And I clearly see um, that there are people that are the anarchist type that are trying to thrust us into civil war and chaos, right? And there are um, the, uh, what, what's, the, what's this first name? The Montgomery Burns of the world and the Simpsons, you know, they're just like, yes, you know, trying to think of the way, like George Soros. It's, the, it's all I see when I see George Soros is a Montgomery Burns character. But there is so much that people don't know that they're not looking at. We have to get people at least to the point, a majority of people, where they're willing to ask questions and then dig, dig just one layer, dig just one layer looking into the answers of their questions. And for some reason in our society, people are not asking the right questions. COVID was easy to solve, and yet We've got people that are like, well, we only knew what we knew what we knew then. And it was like, oh, shit, you didn't see the Harvard professor, you know, getting arrested, the Chinese spies getting popped on a plane from Winnipeg, you know, these level four labs and the leaks. And uh, you don't know about Fort Detrick and how it went from a bioweapons lab. It just changed names to a biodefense lab. And I mean, these things are easy to see, which only lead to more questions. And Within this matrix, this money matrix, people are too bogged down within their personal lives to start digging, to start asking those questions. They want to be told. And unfortunately, in the system that's created, all the people telling them are not, um, don't have their best interests in mind and are just puppets, just paid puppets who are caught within the money machine themselves and just lack integrity and courage. Yeah. I, I tell you there's uh okay this is is two defin definite things you need to say there um is that I, I well if we start off anarchy my of course my idea of what anarchy is is slightly more romanticized and slightly different because I'm on the left wing so we don't necessarily see it as chaos we you know we see it as something else where people are working together individually in a way that is uh much more 
freer than what we see now and of course it's, it's in that sense is is much more of a a, a kind of a st- uh, one of the standard branches of of libertarian ideology just it's a bit far off and there's different v- versions of anarchy in itself but it's always portrayed as something mental um but it, i i mean that's that's not going to change if something's got a label then it tends to stay with that label and and that label if it's defined as something that is specific then it's going to be defined as something as specific and anarchy has got that uh written all over it i'm not sure if it's a bad rap because some people don't do anarchy well and some people do anarchy amazingly you know uh, and, and, and is... what worries me what worries me is the polymath uh, types and the genius types that haven't grappled with their own ego that are pushing this anarchy angle, um, I believe are selfish in the fact that they will survive anarchy and chaos uh, mm-hmm. better than the person I'm fighting for, which is just the soccer mom and the corporate dad that yeah. that that are in this structure. We need to somehow adjust the structure without destroying the structure. And I'm very much believe in that because there are people are going to get hurt um, in a chaotic system, and those people pushing it are wholly confident in their ability to survive it. And so, just like I, I mean, I would be okay as well. Whether you're talking about anarchy, chaotic systems where we collapse down to communities, right? Do you for Johnny? Do you forego technology in what you perceive as anarchy? And you mentioned labels real quick. Uh, labels is, is another way. If we all have different perceptions of the definitions of these labels, then how are we supposed to communicate? And that's another thing that's been co-opted. Right? Is there are so many different um, labels that need. You, they need a nuanced definition, but people in their silos, their silos of inf- inf- information, think they own the only definition to a label. Just the word conservative is is a great example of that and all okay. the different types of conservatism there are. There's, there's, there's three things. There's three things definitely um, that need to be said. First of all is that the whole time I was thinking about Marxism and singularity, two things I don't think is go- are going to exist in 50 years plus anyway. I think that the singularity is bump. I think that it's good. basically there as an idea that, oh, that could be so that you can eventually get people to do whatever you program your AI to do. Um, and up until the point where AI is so good that it kind of works in a way that looks like the sing- uh, singularity, it becomes indistinguishable from uh, tech. You know, high enough technology becomes indistinguishable from magic, and basically AI will become indistinguishable from magic, but will never be magic. Um, and I think Marxism has uh, been rebranded as stakeholder capitalism, um, and has, has taken on certain parts of uh, capitalism so that it can survive. And I don't, I don't think, like in if you actually try and put classic marxism with what the technological future in even 15 20 years time if you try and put classic it would just fall apart it was a, it, communism just isn't going to work you know it's just it, it, all of it would look the same it looks like some sort of techno fascism anyway you know that's what's on the horizon for a lot of people but that's all dependent on what you just consider to be fascist and what you consider to be right and wrong um so i think singularity is something that i i'm i'm really like i i got to a point where i was just like nah it's just that's not gonna really i don't i just don't believe in it i think it's like it's like something that you that that is captivating and it'll just be um you know when you're saying that all of this technology can capture all of your mind it probably can uh, could capture your life and probably replay it with high enough uh, functioning um, ai technology with all of the data points it will gather all through your life and all the different ways you move and you act and all the different images and everything like that but um that that sort of like idea then will lead us on to say well why wouldn't you then take someone like henry kissinger and eric schmidt and stick their heads brains in some sort of supercomputer and then they decide how humanity lives its life and i think that's closer to what the future the singularity the ai will look like will be data points of really people we consider great fucking up the world uh, in an e- a way that's esoteric and detached from reality so we're like oh we we don't have to take accountability for it now it's dead hitler 
or whatever who's doing who's doing the job for us now. So I, I think you know AI singularity and what we see there, it won't manifest like that. And at the end of it, it'll always be exposed as being human in some way. And the way I see AI going at the moment is like I ask AI questions, it says, I'm sorry, I can't talk about that sensitive subject. Oh, is that because you're programmed? No, I'm not programmed at all. So are you programmed not to tell me? No, I'm just not allowed to do it. Oh, okay, wouldn't that be programming? No, no. You know, it doesn't it, you you can you go down this road and you're like, oh, this isn't this isn't AI. This is someone's computer program which uses certain tech AI techniques overlapping with a load of traditional techniques. So we haven't got to that point, and we're not really anywhere near that point. Even the top hundred scientists in the world say, like, it'd be 2070. Like they 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 looked at top hundred scientists, they kind of averaged it out, and it said be about 2070 where they think that they'd see artificial general intelligence. Oh, and we, that we doesn't. Could... That doesn't we necessarily got... go on. Sorry. No, please. Doesn't necessarily. I know we dis. I, we dis. Uh, we disagree on on uh, that because you think it's something that's coming up uh, sooner. Um, but I, I, I'm not even sure artificial general intelligence is quite what we think it is. I don't. I think our understanding of these things will change over time, and other technology may. Um, change the way we see these being incorporated into our society and there was the other question of where i you know what if, i don't want to be sitting out the back filling manure up in me me toilet and all of this i'd like i'd like to i'm a i i like to have a community i'd like to have a group of people who are treated well um, if shit hits the fan and they can't support themselves. So there needs to be obviously an infrastructure that can help people like that. And that obviously ends up being some form of government or some sort of like public run institution. The problem is it, they go out of control all the time. Everything becomes corrupt. Um, so I, I mean, how you solve that, that's the problem is and, you may have to have uh, random rule changes here and there and, you know, change, change the whole infrastructure to, to make uh, make things work do and, things within terms uh, sorry go on yeah and uh, but i mean that's what we're that's we're at the point of right Are, aren't we seeing the just total corruption of the uh, again my lens is the united states aren't we just seeing the total corruption of the united states government and what are supposed to be our representatives um, you always been that way though it's always been you i mean you go throughout history no. and everything's it's, it's corrupt all the way down is they right. just people people love they love to they love to push the boundaries and they love to get a little bit of certain something for themselves that's a negative i i hear you but even even when you were talking i i wrote down negative lens right and so sometimes <laughs> okay. when you're talking quickly and you're and you're defining you're defining something uh, for people to take in and for me to take in. It's like I can very easily just say, oh, well, that's from a negative lens. You can look at the same mm -hmm. thing from a positive lens and see something different or a different outcome. And so, you know, I do remember a time when representatives uh, represented a region, their district that they came from, and now it's become all teams, red team, blue team, this team, that team, but then you get these omnibus bills that are written by these people in the shadows that aren't that aren't even on a team. They don't even have to uh, give allegiance to a team. These omnibus bills, and they just lift them up within a couple days uh, to read, and they go and they push through, and they lead to things like funding these organizations. We were talking about Epstein before, and I'll, I'll get it back to Epstein um, before we started recording. I'll get it back to that conversation because I want to talk about that. Um, but one thing that you specifically pointed out that I want to fight against is you said the top scientists in the world don't think that AI is this or that. The top and AI scientists, like, it's, it's, it's from right, some buff magazine, but, you know, it's whoever they've chosen, well, indeed. Well, I've not chosen on. these hundred. <laughs> I've, I've chosen these top scientists of the world, and they all say global warming is a thing, and they know oh, I don't like them. I don't like them. Burn the witch. <laughs> so, so careful when you talk about top scientists in the world. When, within yeah, I, I'm talking other people's. I, I'm talking through other someone else's paradigm. Now I'm saying, and, you know, this is what they're saying within the EFA, but I'm not sure I ever believe the EFA. And just, then you, I, I, I'm kind of on their side that it's not round the corner. And then you use chat GPT 
one of these that you or I can log into and use. You used one of those as an example. Well, the thing I will agree with is you said what we think of AI now will change and become something else. What I'm trying to tell you is <clears throat> that future that you think is around the corner and you don't think it's going to get there, it's already here. And you can, you, I will, sir, I will try to do the thought experiment of weapons technology and the conversation we were having earlier. And you said, ah, they're getting rid of the old weapons, right? They're getting rid of the old weapons. That implied new weapons are coming in. We also know that typically the United States military is 30, 20, 30 years ahead of what comes down the pipe later as technology that you or I use within the world, right? So what I'm worried about is that that AI technology has already gotten there. It's already around the corner. And you're still messing with ChatGPT thinking you understand what AI is because of the interface they've given you to play with. And, and, and you're not alone. There's a, one, of the, one of the better podcasts I listen to um, in terms of news, de news um, deconstruction. They also laugh. They, die AI, it's so silly they're talking about it. But they are using them. Another, another analogy that, 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 uh, that I want to try to talk to the audience about is, and I, don't, I can't remember if it was before we were recording or, or after, but you mentioned psychological operations. And, and I, got, I got to the point in my investigations that are both digital and in person, okay? I'm not in a non. I am Jay Frad. I'm out in the open as myself. And, but I've been in a non-communities, if you will. Is I started doing this thought experiment when I started to realize that public relations firms had merged in some way with Madison Avenue. Okay, Madison Avenue, as we grew up, was this advertising. Oh, they advertised for all the big brands. Well, I started realizing that the PR firms had merged with Madison Avenue, and they were using talent agencies representations right you could just plug and play and create constructs for people to play in psychological operations how i came to psychological operations was i always saw the world through a lens of content marketing okay content marketing i i'm uh, i own a small business it's a retail business i would come up with content marketing structures um, that I would put out and I would nurture and I really like them. I would always try to bring value to the community within my content marketing structures. But so I would always see it. And when I realized, oh, shit, psychological operations are simply content marketing. I tapped into all that experience I had as a content marketer. And I was able to see things from a different perspective. And what I'm trying to say is I started going through the thought experiment of hang on a second. Everything in this world right now in terms of our government is contractors. They contract everything out. The DOD is the largest employer on the planet. That's scary when you think about it. The Department of Defense is the largest employer on the planet. And everything has been, in our modern sense now, things have been funneled down through contractor relationships. Well, what happens to the folks, you know, we, we can talk about mercenaries and it's always romantic to think about these, these guys, muscular guys that were out there in Afghanistan or, or, uh, or Vietnam or, or off in these clandestine areas like, uh, like uh, Guatemala and, you know, on the tip of the spear of these clandestine operations. And where do they go when they retire? And we romanticize about soldiers of fortune and they become contractors. And do you remember, um, Eric Prince's original organization, right? Black. What was it again? It wasn't Black. Anyways, I'm not going to think of the name, but it, he created contractors, soldiers of fortune, contractors that the replaced. Were, were ever present in Iraq. Um, yes. Yes. They replaced. Um, they oh, replaced. I can't remember that. I, can't I, I know. What's, what's the name of that organization? Anyways, Eric Prince, everybody's yelling it right now. You guys know. So what I'm trying to say is what happens to the psychological operators, 
the ones who have been trained within the fourth psychological psychological operations group within the United States, the ones that have been trained just as soldiers, just to have this knowledge, have this ability to look at the world. Now, again, the soldiers of fortune who went off to fight in Iraq as contractors, they're just doing a job, just doing my job. There's no patriotism and or it was it's money machine, right? Those same types of you can now apply that towards those psychological operators. Now, okay, so now I've created this world that I want you to try to look at from a lens. Now, what happens when the oligarchs can now contract private organizations of psychological people that understand those layers, and they also can tap into other contractor groups, soldiers of fortune types, maybe, things like that. So now oligarchs, countries, third world countries, second world countries, they all have this ability to contract and create pay and create these psychological operations. And that is what we're dealing with right now is this just fog of war for anybody that wants to scratch the surface and go dive into things. There are silos everywhere, silos of information that people get stuck in and then they view the world you know, from this, from their silo of information. And I've come across these operatives that have these silos of their own of influence and they're connected to another. I've got a great, um, I've got a great, remind me uh, as we develop the conversation, a great illustration that talks about silos and it gives a really great um illustration of compartmentalization that I was taught by a friend of mine. So if we get to that, or if you want me to do it right now, we can do that. But I wasn't trying to hijack the conversation. I was just trying so much of this world. We have to always look at the lens we're looking at it from, uh, whether we're viewing it from negative or positive uh, perspectives or putting that lens, like you said earlier, when you have your rose colored glasses on leftism, you know, anarchy and what that can bring. Right. I, I do the same thing. Um, we have to always change because when we get stuck and we're not constantly moving within the information field, we, we can get stuck within a silo. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't even know where we were. For example, well, you said fascism in the future. I mean, I can clearly lay out fascism and how it exists now, just in the fact of you mentioned Eric Schmidt, Eric Schmidt goes from corporate to government. He ran operation warp speed, right? I know that from, uh, from the investigations of your former partner, right? So, so what what is fascism? It's not this amorphous thing that's out in the future. Or someone's trying to put it in. It is our current structure with the revolving door. This Gottlieb fellow, right? This Gottlieb fellow. Uh, he's head of Pfizer, and then he's also head of the FDA. How does that work? Yeah. You know, it's it's it, we're existing in it now, and we need as this opportunity comes as these. Uh, Forces come to bear where chaos might come of it, uh, this panopticon of control structure might come of it. There will be a window of opportunity that we can influence it so that we uh, instill um, ethical uh, boundaries and um, protections for our rights. Make the oath of office. If you are in the federal government, you sign an oath, you pledge an oath to be neutral, to be biased, to not be political in the execution of your office. And so many people are violating that oath. You know, when are we going to start holding our structures accountable? So that was, okay, I'm right. sorry to go on. No, 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 no. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's because of BlackRock that I'm remembering it like this, but I get a feeling that company was called Blackstone. I think it was called Blacks. I can't remember. Um, but but when, when we're talking about um, where we are with AI, uh, you were saying about where we are with AI. No, I'm, I listen. I don't think we're near the singularity. I think that significant enough AI and significant enough meaning it can do 8,000 times the task of a human uh, at a high speed constantly and every switched off is about to happen because we don't have to get anywhere near artificial general intelligence or singularity for it to become that powerful. And when we talk about chat, chat GPT, well, I, 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 I was like, okay, 
I've got a lot of things to do. Um, uh, and let's see how to use this tool. And I've tried it in loads of different ways. I've tried the tool in lo to use the tool in loads of different ways to see what comes of it. It's extremely restrictive and it's, ex ex it's what I'd expect to see as a showcase for what is coming in the future, but not actually what is present within the military now the 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 amount the technology moves is exponentially so if we were already at a point years ago where ai was already at a high level now we're going to be uh, extremely high level and ai is now working at making it quicker so that's going to this this it's off the like whoa the, the the thing that comes back around the thing that always i get the feeling of is that from when i read it is the uh, herman khan uh, statement that I put in the end of um, Dr. Klaus Schwab or how the CFR taught me to stop worrying and love the bomb. Um, like that idea that technology is going to be moving too fast. And that means that we are going to face uh, 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 some sort of catastrophe, whether we like it or not. And there's so many different catastrophes we can have. And they're all running. The infrastructure is currently made for us to run towards all of them at high speed. And the people who are really at the top of it are, are people like, uh, you know, like even even if it's just to the policy point, then you've got like Klaus Schwab, who's trying to in, in enforce uh, a global policy regime that will uh, be installed in a governments all around the world, a form of leadership training, which will be installed in governments all around the world. And what does it uh, a yes. bit have like allegiance to? Let's get to the technologies regardless of their risk, because oh. that's what my original mentor told me while other people are saying stop slow down slow down and and you know the truth is always somewhere in the middle the problem yeah. is, is once we've got like uh, four or five significant technologies that are just going to happen in the next 20 years that are game changers like how atomic weapon we was so i it's really hard for me to see it through anything when i look at technology and how fast we're moving but anything but some form of negative lens it's hard for me to come out of that because it looks so negative and i what i i would i, I would turn that round on you and just replace the lens with positive lens you're saying everything through a positive lens and i understand that and the truth is probably still somewhere in between me and you so the truth is probably going to be something something along the lines of there will be options and ways for people to you know they, they, if, yes. if we're thinking about how technology works how this technology works and we've got to get over some certain points and we we could say that uh at some point in the next 20 years tech, technology ai uh everything like this will probably be able to tell what you're thinking before you think it because you're already thinking stuff before you realize it that's already been proven over and over again you know we make a decision our brain makes a decision and then we think we make the decision you know that's how it works but in actual fact a decision is kind of made already and when we were talking earlier about the idea of uh, where we are with ai and and what what this whole reality is this is uh, it, it always comes back to me there's a simulation on top of a simulation on top of simulation on top of simulation yes. that would mean that at some point we are all a, a, a form of ai we're running off a, a blip within an ai moment but what, then what does that mean what can i do in my own present to make my own existence within this strange like thing happen and, and we, we we we're trying to understand everything and everybody's looking for um like really it's looking for a savior someone who's going to come along and tell them that everything's going to be all right and it's just not going to be all right so i i i i, I don't want to be uh a, a negative nancy but if i if i look at everything and i examine everything and it comes to the same conclusion every time which is god these humans are really stupid and the ones who get into control and power are some of these most stupidest i can't see how we're going to overcome that however hard we try it seems to make sense of that idea that that um maybe significant enough intelligence will kill itself off and that's why we've never seen anything from anywhere else but again that's all negative i know i know i know I'm not saying that that's going to happen. My idea of what the future is, is much more nuanced. I think that if everything's going to, if all of the cards are on the table, 
we if everybody knows everything about everybody or some big infrastructure knows everything about everybody then the whole way people play the game changes you know if the, the people i investigate are sometimes some of the people are some of the most horrible people who are doing the most horrible things around and if it's completely known what they're doing and who they are they'll no longer do that in that way because it will be socially unacceptable. So what does yes. that ask questions about a security state? Is that a good thing or a bad? That's a positive effect, but there's so many negatives. And that's the whole point. He who decides how this technology gets implemented and what balance it is, decides what we consider normal and abnormal in the future. And that is a power that, that again, will lead us down a road of division, not of anything else, because someone's going to decide what we like. And that, that can be like the first thousand days project. I think it's called the first thousand days, which is the um, uh, Welcome Leap project. We're in the Welcome Trust. Jeremy Farrar, of course, is now not the director of the Welcome Trust. I think he's left and now he's gone across to be uh, one of the heads of the World Health Organization. Oh, of and, course, a global organization that... Yeah, uh, cool. I'm yeah, sorry to interrupt. Was, no, no, no. But, just... but basically, basically, they, you know, they they have they they want to make every kid's brain neurotypical the same, and that again, loads of questions, loads of yeah. questions, and no answers, zero answers. They just keep jumping into the abyss. So it's just that I don't want to be from a negative lens, but that Herman Kahn, uh, like speech he gives little little speech he gives it, it really rings true that we're on the precipice of something really dangerous and we're not pulling back we're still acting like monkeys we're still acting like we're back uh, millions of years ago and we're just we just don't know what's going on we're 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 just we're blobs we we we're not we're not doing the best we're not giving our best we're not achieving the best and we're all fighting all of the time over really stupid stuff when in actual fact obviously there's an abundance of stuff and we could create an abundance but yes. we keep destroying everything all of the time so until the human humanity isn't like um living in this idea of let's destroy everything all the time then i'll be more positive about the direction of where humanity is going and that's how i well you're you're working a plank okay your investigations into people holding them accountable bringing transparency um to um opaque operations right that's that's a plank we we all have our planks um in this in this battle that is going on that there is no, you can't just turn on the television and see how the battle's going and see the characters, right? There, it's a multi-planked operation that is going on. And as long as you are engaged and as long as you are doing the best you can to be um, a good person and inject empathy and um Gosh, I keep missing the word, and I wish I could hear somebody that's screaming out. Humility, to me. humility. Um, you know, something that takes the ego away for the betterment of others. And I realize how that can be hijacked, and it is hijacked for for nefarious means, but not nefarious means. Um, you said something earlier where you were talking about that they want to create these constructs, and I just, I, I just think about it again. It's like Johnny, they're already here. We I already know, have. I know. They, they, they turned on 180 million IP addresses recently. And that means, if you imagine that, that, that somehow AI can be run from an IP address and give it some sort of individuality, but can do um, 8,000 times the task of a human and doesn't turn off, then we're already here. We're already in a space where no one knows what's going on and no one knows what's happening. Everything is, is, is already seemingly... It, it, oh, seemingly calmer than it actually is that something else is happening that a yeah. new a new horizons already in place but i've been saying this to people for a long time about the leadership group and how when, when in the early 90s when it was decided the first global leaders for tomorrow that first course really threw us off into a direction that we wouldn't we were we only catching up to now we're only seeing the damage that's been done in the past now, and there's no way to reverse it because technology and everything else is moving too fast and is controlled by the top.
So how do you get around that, Jay? How do you get around that? How do you make me positive? How do you make me positive about where we're going? Maybe I don't want to because you seem to be doing an amazing job of digging and bringing people into awareness, which I think is the first battle is getting people to question, getting people to dig on their own. Because again, I mean, we've said so much. I want to go back and pick different things that we could talk for an hour about right? It's difficult to have these conversations because they involve so much theory and philosophy and we're, we're just scratching the surface of the conversation. Let me give you an example and you can take with it whatever, whatever you want within your paradigm because I do agree that that top control structure is the question and I do agree with those are the people um, that are trying to program the tools of our demise. I don't think they can do that without paid contractors that negate, that just do things for money, right? So couldn't an Elon Musk or a Peter Thiel fight against the global oligarch that set up these mega NGO structures in some way because they're the ones that actually understand the technology versus these old farts that could never They're understand. working with them. They're working with them. If you give over the, the rights to, to Skynet or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> um, to, to the, the neocons of the Alliance for Securing Democracy who ran Hamilton 68 and those guys to do what they're doing with the nefarious business on behalf of, of CIA conduits like Nash Endowment of Democ- for democracy and a USAID if you're doing all of that then you're on their side you're there you're you're part they're not fighting against these people they're joining okay. in with them so and and we're using those names because those names are easy easy Peter Thiel uh, Elon Musk do you know how many thousands of names that we have no idea about but that understand the technology and are there working that then the Peter Thiel and the Elon Musk have to then manipulate. So there is an opportunity from a positive lens. There is an opportunity for a rebellion within that structure um, to not be this top down programming. Let, Let me give you an example. And for sake of housekeeping, the name, the company we could not remember was Blackwater. Blackwater. Black was water. Ah, and, it was and, Blackstone. I was thinking of that because of yeah. Black Rock. I couldn't help it. Black and water. from my and from my life, that's that's an example. It is an element I, as well, really. Water that, that's that's an example I could see in my life where I started to see contracting um, as use, you know, by the government using private. Or, I mean, fascism in some ways, but using private organizations um, within the government structure, which has become the dominant use within government to contract out uh, a myriad of different ways and departments. Let me give you my example. This is from the campaign trail. So it brings it back to Eric John Berner and the campaign, which, which is why you, you hollered at me. So we're in Des Moines, Iowa again, and we decide uh, we're, 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 we're trying to think about things to do to, to influence, to, um, to work. So we wanted to go see the mayor of Des Moines. And we went to the office and they said, no, no, the mayor's at his business. Oh, this humble guy, super, super humble, super, he's at his business working and he is a Democrat. We were trying, we were trying to go see the mayor. We were, we tried to see mayors of different towns that we would go to with local infrastructure, that sort of thing. So we go to his business and, uh, Boy, I think at this point, what you're trying to pull out of me is no punches. So I can't remember his name, but, um, he owned a fur shop. Okay, so he's selling furs. And we thought, wow, that's quite the uh, dichotomy for a liberal left-leaning mayor who's been mayor for like a decade and he owns a fur shop. That's an interesting dynamic. And we go and talk to him and I did a quick little research and I saw that he was a uh, part of one of those uh, global global gatherings of mayors and things like that. You know what I'm talking about? You're, you're, you are touching upon those structures that have been created for this influence and most likely it's pushing uh, uh, their agenda onto his local community through him as a conduit. Now, Sometimes people, people that are watching this show right now, maybe yourself, maybe I am victim to this also, is we see these characters as nefarious. Oh, he's a member of this. When I got to go see this guy in person, not digitally researching him, but go and meet the guy, 
this mayor who's a part of this global structure of mayors, right, has a sister city mayor, you know, these things that are pushing this ESG and these environmental issues in our local communities. ESG, I agree. Go on. He was, he was um, a really nice guy. And I could clearly see what he was doing. And this guy and his wife, because I met his wife too, we just so happened to meet him and his wife, they were just really great people and they like to travel. So they get roped into this thing, right? So now they're not paying for their travel. Their government's paying for their travel. This uh, organization that's sending them off to far flung Asian uh, destinations is paying for their stay and this and that. And oh, uh, also, what's the other human element of it? As I'm looking around at this fur shop. And when I say fur shop, they're selling expensive $3,000 fur coats and things like that. So now you think of the human trappings of, oh, they're not selling a lot of fur coats in Des Moines, Iowa. They, as entrepreneurs, mm. maybe they're selling fur, fur coats globally to this network they're meeting. So in, in their selfish interests of wanting to travel and enjoy life, they participate in this structure that's been created. And this, and again, it's all virtue-based, right? So they're virtuous people. And they get programmed with the top scientists of the world, believe this. And so then they go back to their communities. Oh, of course, the top scientists of the world, I've seen the evidence. And we need to do this. It's all supported in this structure. But it's not, the people within it are not necessarily nefarious right? They're almost serving some selfish means in some way, and they think they're doing good. This, this virtue, this weaponized virtue has um, captured people within a particular silo, as I, as I put it. I like to look at things in terms of their silos of information. And so we have to always remember that we're talking about real people when you're doing your digital blah, 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 you know, you're looking into somebody is not to necessarily think of them as nefarious people, as if they're part of that operation. They might be, uh, to use the term, useful idiots or just um, enjoying life from their perspective, getting filled with propaganda that they don't know is propaganda. So we have to strip away the propaganda, strip away the, em strip away the emperor's clothes so that so that people like that can see the false information that they've been given or um, the participation they're putting into something that would take away sovereignty of their community, sovereignty of our country. Um, and through that means, through means of education and fighting through information, right, in an information war, um, your plank is very righteous. And uh, I'm just trying to say, through my example that I met somebody that could be thought of and immediately discarded as uh, a nefarious type, as just a normal, nice person, proud of their life, proud of what they're doing, just kind of, uh, to me, caught up in uh, misinformation. And of course, they're also being told uh, that anybody against them has been caught up in misinformation. The, the way that they flip this control structure, as you as you see it from the top, the way they flip in Orwellian ways, words and um, attacks, right? They Im impeach Trump for all the things Biden is guilty of. Um, they say they're fighting all the things they're guilty of. I mean, they even even look at Antifa as a as a construct out here in the Pacific Northwest, where Ant it's basically Antifa headquarters. You know, they're not really fighting fascism. They're almost created what to, mm -hmm. so, so that one side can say fascism. that they're fighting fascism, mm -hmm. even though they're steeped within a fascistic structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The problem is, you know, the problem is, this is what I always say, the problem is, the problem is, but we look at, I, 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 it's like where to start with within this because I agree. Okay, right. I agree that there's a lot coming up in the future that's going to change. We're, we're all gonna we're all gonna find a new place to be in the world, and um, and a lot of what we we've been we do we do individualistically, if that's how we want to say it, and do it from our. I, I'm 
I'm not naive to that. I I do realize that when we go on side and uh, on online and everybody's screaming within the group, that in reality a lot of what they say they don't do on the outside, and it really annoys me because I'm someone who's like I practice what I preach and I try and yeah. keep to that, and sometimes I regret what I preach because of that. You know, um, so so I I I. I constantly um i find myself let down by the reality of what someone's like once you know someone who and i've said it today you know don't don't uh you 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 have your heroes and stuff but the likelihood is that the normal human beings um and normal human beings are looking out for number one and i'll I'll, I'll be like, I have a stance on something where I say, oh, I don't agree with this. Then I'm talking with someone in the park and they're talking about how they do that. And I still like that person and I still don't want to uh, be horrible to that person because they've chosen to be uh, in a different way. And and also within my articles, what, what I've spoken about a lot is that I spent the first two days I'd been hating the person and being rah, and then kind of like that all disappears all of a sudden. All of a sudden I, I, I have no, uh, I, I'm not empathetic towards them. I'm not um, uh, narcissistic or or aggressive towards them. I'm not looking to paint them as a character. I just end up wanting to dragnet all the information and put it in chronological order. That's basically what my that that what that's what works best because at the end of it you get the truth and you don't get your mm-hmm. your your code of vision. Because I I feel sick about the idea of like someone else's version of what reality is. Um, but everybody has their own little reality everybody lives within bubbles within bubbles within bubbles and i do understand that and i am sympathetic to to a lot of um i i think i i, I think the problem is that the bubbles don't have a lot of sense anymore that these people are living in they're, they're trying to get by and the the systems around us are changing so fast and people are losing their work and things are getting so expensive and people are being left behind technologically speaking um and there's also like all of this what you what we were talking about just earlier which i didn't really comment on was uh fully was when you're talking about the psyop stuff well i recently did a news ham my most recent news ham was one about the nudge unit when that was introduced in about 2008 2009 2010 a guy called richard thaler who was um uh one of obama's uh guys um advisors at one point um basically invented the idea of nudging people and what it is is just psychological operations on people but they call it nudging they use marketers for it and so the psychological operations became like pr and marketing um and when you were talking about that sort of stuff it was like yeah that's that that's the evolution of it and now we're in a point where marketers who are the some of the worst people on earth and i agree with bill hicks about a lot of the marketers if anybody knows here what he says about uh, what he said about them but basically like these are some of the worst people on earth and they're inventing our society they're recreating our society we got a lot of this happening at the moment we got a lot of stinky going on at the moment and i really do i I mean we've got to wind this up we've been talking a a good uh, um uh, amount of time about some really interesting topics some of the things uh you said i i completely agree with you on and some i'm wrestling with i'm i'm wrestling with because i don't think i necessarily hear what i believe will be the end result from what you're saying about certain things but other things i'm i'm like yeah i can see how that can be because i've been looking at it more and more and there is no way around it our society is going to change whether we like it or not there's no holding on like the idea of what conservative is now is going to change rapidly in the next 10 20 years and the idea of what liberal is now is also going to change during that time and that is we're already on that scary ride jumping on with uh transgender ideology and all of this sort of stuff is the start of this really bumpy ride but people don't realize how it's just never really going to end because we're doing the same thing we've always done which is try and understand why the 
how we're here and why that matters and try and give importance to our own life and so there has to be the two things the understanding the individual and understanding the collective and i think the problem is is that the mega cities head towards the collective being uh, the the one that's most important and the other way is something that's much more palatable for people like me but gives other options for other people and when i hear musk and uh, their, their vision of mega cities it reminds me very much of the 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 ideas of mega cities that come from 2018 where you 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 have these sort of like wastelands that surround them because there's been wars between mega cities or there's been wars between nation states and etc and you're not left with arable land for a good reason because they don't want you on that land because they want to crush you into the mega city and so it makes it makes business sense then to get people off the territory and get and that's kind of what's already happening with bill gates what you're saying is true. Loads of what's happened and what we think is going to happen has already happened. And loads of it isn't as negative as we think it is. But then loads of it isn't as positive that I don't think that the, you know, the fairy tale would. And where, where, where we lie on that, I don't know which one of us is closer to fairy tale or fact at the moment. You know, we're well, both. Gone. You, 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 want, you want to wrap it up. And, and I would love an opportunity to come back or encourage you to the, the conversation we were having before the before the recording started, where we were talking about factions within the CIA. We were talking about characters like Adnan Khashoggi. We were having a very uh, you mentioned Operation Condor. You know, we were having a very interesting conversation I thought was going to go somewhere. Um, but I, I realized we need to wrap it up. I, I would just. When you think about quantum computing technology. And it goes, it, it ties into a lot of what we've discussed here in terms of AI's capabilities now versus in the future. And how I was trying to say, hey, you know, if, if we've been doing quantum computing technology and, and researching that since the 90s, and others are on the cutting edge of, of that, then where is it at now? Try, try to do the thought experiment. If, if throughout your life, military applications are 20 years ahead of where they come down and you can see them within society, which again would be its own siloed and or control structure that's at this top level, right? I mean, that, that's got to be there. Um, quantum technology is a very, um, and quantum computing is very interesting. Um, and I'll just say again, if we reach the singularity in the future, then we're already in the singularity. Um, and, and that I, I came up with that philosophical saying from the explorations of reality. I, I know people that are searching for to prove the existence of God. And I know people that are trying to prove the existence that we're in a simulation. And I've talked to both groups and I've said, hey, try to merge because you're both trying to prove the same thing. And um, the, that particular volunteer aspect of what I do and what I jump into is wildly fascinating, wildly philosophical. And um, I just try to apply it all to this exploration, you know, on our planet. Uh, I mean, we, we wanna try to save people. Clearly something's fucked up and going wrong, right? Clearly, we can see the corruption, the fascism. It's everywhere. Well, what are we going to do about it to, to the point about we're all living individual lives and individuals? Well, as individuals, we need to inject ourselves. Um, if we want something to get better, we have to inject ourselves into the system to try to make change. And I was blessed by the universal algorithm or God, I was blessed that Eric Berner contacted me and I had an opportunity as a normal normal researcher, normal folk, um, to uh, use him as a platform, this, this genius character um, that's always, that, that's been through different structures within the federal government, I, I, to try to inject him as a mission um, for change. And the campaign's over in terms of him trying to be president. He has suspended campaign, endorsed Donald Trump, but that mission doesn't end. It just goes into a different phase for that plank that I'm working on. Yeah, that's a uh, it's a wicked adventure to go on, though. Um, and when you said that, uh, you know, if we're thinking about it, if the military industrial complex or military technology is twenty years 
in the advance which have always felt that that's true then many would say then we're already dead and the fact is though we're not we we're are not. still here um and that is you know humans uh renowned for self-preservation that's how we've made it <laughs> this far so far so I, I i really do hope that if we are that far ahead that the right people are concentrating on the right things but it doesn't look like it from the outside so what about marco rodin and his uh mathematics wildly wildly fascinating vortex mathematics i know people that are um trying to combine the um particle theory with the wave theory and what wh what's coming out of it and these are the people that are doing these deep investigations that are not known they're not not famous physicists but in that exploration trying to prove the existence of god existence of when the simulation there's also things coming out about uh field and harmonics and vibration and and so just keep going Think about yourself if you've got a if you've got a spiral of self destruction that you keep repeating in your life. Confront that. Look in the mirror. Be the best person that you can be. If you want to get involved for the betterment of society, for the betterment of your community, for the betterment of the world, get involved. Start local. If if you're searching for ideas, but you're not political, uh, look into your local co op. You know, there there are so many different ways that once you get involved and you start, I mean, most of us are curm curmudgeons like Johnny, like myself. I mean, we do lean towards that anarchistic kind of leave me alone. I want to have my own plot of land, right? But at the same time, we we seek the fellowship of, fe of humans. So be outward, get involved in those structures, make sure you're doing it for the best interest. Try to take set ego aside. I never have... Um, I'm, I'm constantly fighting ego. You always have to fight that ego and check your own um, motives for what you're doing, right? Um, and it, it will be okay, but we need more people to join, more people to dig, more people just to question, just to yeah. question. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that. And wow, I, I mean, for me, I have to say, um, I've started, I, I already kind of knew where it was going, but I already know where my place within community is for sure. Um, I, I, w I, I, my, I think my work probably projects this out, but I work um, uh, on another area away from the officials. So in my area, there's a lot of young men um, who have not got the best manners, not being taught the, the, the best in school who are looking for um, routes to do stuff and are often denied. And so a lot of my um, uh, involvement within community is being the person that isn't a youth worker, isn't connected with the police, isn't connected with anyone else, who's lived a completely different existence and can tell them stories that they you know find very interesting and then can direct those boys to not ride their quad bikes all over the park or do anything like that etc etc and remain peace within the community and i i'm i've i've worked out that you know a lot of the authorities fail at being able to reach through to young people and i found that, that is a place where me and my my one of my brothers from another mother monkey we fit in very well at being sort of like equilibrium between that and actually talking with the kids who a lot of people are afraid to speak to and talking at, 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 to, to them at their level yes. and them them coming back with re respect because nearly all of the kids around here I, I i can talk honestly and open to uh, openly with because i'm not an authority so i can say exactly what a human being needs to say uh all the authorities don't have and i think there's well whenever a authority figures fail so as the police uh the powers uh, distinguish and this sort of intelligence infrastructure comes over that does lead a point to a point where there needs to be community leaders and other people who can uh help to balance out all of those issues and i think that these sort of like unofficial sort of um and more like ancient traditional sort of like um 
uh, roles within society and within community are coming back because um, the technology actually distances ourselves, keeps us in our community, and means that we have to interact better. So I can see how um, my role in my own society has changed as technology has advanced and as technology changes. And I know one of my most important things for me to do is to give those kids uh, the truth instead of the shit that they're getting elsewhere and give put them on a better path for the future and also be able to say you know you prove yourself to me and i'll give you uh, a a good reference for your, yeah. your first job and etc and you know and have faith and l- let the kids break a couple of rules and call you a couple of names and it because every kid around here has called me names at some point and every kid around here comes to me afterwards and ends up with a fist bump and being like all right bro how's it going and then soon we 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 know each other very well. I'm talking with them in the park, and they've grown up a bit because that's how community and that's how people work. And we all go through our little journeys, our independent individual journeys. And I want to remain positive within that. And I know that the the, the outward approach of saying, you know, oh, this is a terrible world. Technocratic solutions are going to be put on this transhumanism. All of this, it's all terrible. Yeah, it could be terrible. But we're still going to um, constantly find our balance and constantly equalize whenever a new system or new sets control structures get put in. And I believe that you are trying to convince me of that. And you are trying to, and, and I appreciate that. And I really like the fact that we're talking across lines because you are officially uh, probably on the other side to where I am traditionally, which I would officially probably a left wing liberal um and now i i'm talking to someone who who can uh convince me of another side and a side that i still don't completely feel like i understand um so i really appreciate us having the conversation jay um yeah and i'd uh, I'd love i'd love to have another conversation which is um is about that quantum and our brains being quantum as well and how you are connecting with people uh, in your community and there's a there's communication that goes on there that's understood that's not spoken that you clearly have Uh, i i do as well Uh, i've got examples from the campaign trail that are incredible Um, i had a street a street walker come up to me and deliver a message to me um, look me right in the eye and give me a message as he walked by while i was on the campaign trail in washington dc Um, it, our world is as amazing as, uh, as we're willing to look into and imagine. And I just encourage people to, um, get outside of that construct of selfishness and, or the constructs that have been set forth for you to compete in and forget about empathy, forget about your neighbor, forget about this or forget about that. Um, I think there always should be an element of competition within any structure that comes about, but we are going to enter a period here where new structures are built and um, we need more people with integrity and empathy within those structures, within the architecture of those structures. And um, we'll see what happens. I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, I can't see the future. I don't have Operation Looking Glass at my disposal, <laughs> or if that was a psychological operation. But I'm telling you, there are there are things that you can see that almost gives the appearance that somebody has tapped into that, whether it's in the past or in the future, or if there's already some sort of lines of communication. And uh, there is a battle. I don't know if the battle will be on the psychic plane. I don't know if the battle will be behind the scenes or if the battle will be out front in our realities in the physical nature. But something's coming that's going to um, either lead to the great reset as Klaus Schwab in his fancy uniform wants to put forth or uh, another thing. I've stopped using uh, that other term just because I, I, I've almost – inverted the the psychological operations and i don't want to use certain terms but there is a an uprising within humanity that you can also clearly see if you look 
um, that I think uh, is is founded in uh, patriotism and values of the Constitution and God given rights. And we just need to. I, I think if we stay on that foundational platform, um, and then also be good and empathetic towards others, whether we, the best thing will come out of leftists arguing with conservatives or liberals arguing with conservatives over something in the middle. That's what it's supposed to be about, right? In our mm -hmm. in 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 the structure of governance that's created. And and I think empathy is is should be central to that. Yeah, we can both agree on that. Jay, Absolutely. thank you very much for coming on the newspaper. We will see you later, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>